What does the month of September hold for us, our future, and the future of our planet? September is ushering in a wide array of energies and astrological alignments that are going to bring about both amazing events, opportunities, and innovations, along with more of the craziness that we have already witnessed throughout 2024, but this time on a much more intense level. Preparing us all for the craziest month of 2024 thus far, which is going to be October, followed by December. But let us get through the month of September first. Overall, September is an amazing month of transformation and helping to bring more balance into our lives and hopefully onto the planet Earth too. So what can we expect for the month of September? For starters, major ups and downs in the economy, more bank closures, especially towards the latter part of the month as we move into October, which will be even more intense for the banking system and the economies. Major hurricanes, typhoons and monsoons breaking flood records across the globe in september more major earthquakes as fault lines awaken on a whole other level of course political upheaval in several countries and so much more today i'm going to share with you both the numerology and the western astrology alignments for september so that you know what to expect but more importantly so that you can take the best advantage of the month of September, along with very, very specific predictions coming in from my spirit guides for the month. This is my September forecast in predictions. <laughs> Welcome, beautiful friends and tribe to September 2024. And a huge happy birthday goes out to all my fellow Virgos and our late September Libras. If you happen to have a birthday coming up in the near future, you're definitely going to want to check out my video, The Most Powerful Day of the Year, because your birthday is the most powerful day of the year. If you actually knew how to utilize your birthday in the weeks leading up to your birthday, so make the best out of your astrological new year, your birthday, and check out my video, The Most Powerful Day of the Year. I will leave a link up above. September is an eight universal month in numerology. It is a powerful time for manifestation, empowerment, and of course, abundance. Although it might not appear to be so much the case when it comes to the economy in the month of September, and again, leading to the month of October, as I told you, which will be a nine vibration of endings and letting go and death of cycles, which is going to be pretty intense for the economy and for banking systems. But that's all going to start in the month of September because it is the eight vibration. Not only that, we're in an eight universal year in numerology, and this is the eight month. That's double eights, baby. And the eight vibration is the infinity symbol. It gives us infinite possibilities. But it also, of course, affects economy, finances, and personal finances. You can either go up or you can go down. There's usually no floating in between. So the energy the number eight is all about harnessing your inner strength. Harnessing your inner strength, taking very decisive actions, and stepping into your personal power. It's all about calling back your power, friends. I did a video, actually, a guided meditation called Calling Your Power Back earlier this year, in the beginning of the year. I think it was January. I'll make a link up above so that you can catch it because September is the perfect month for you to utilize that meditation and start calling your power back if you haven't started already. September is a month where the seeds that you have planted in the past are now about to begin the fruit and we're about to pick that fruit. Hopefully, with all the hard work that you put off over the past year, it's all going to pay off in many tangible ways in the month of September. It's also the autumn equinox, of course, in the Northern Hemisphere, whereas in the Southern Hemisphere, they'll be celebrating the rebirth of spring. So equinox, regardless, is a perfect time to celebrate all of that in which you sowed over the past year and all of that in which you are going to harvest in the month of September. That's why it's the harvest festivals, friends. The eight energy also encourages you to focus on your goals and to do so with discipline and with determination. Plug into that Virgo energy. It's all about determination and being really organized. So it's also a reminder that you do have the ability 
to shape your reality through your thoughts, through your actions, and through your intentions. As I say all the time, your thoughts and words are the blueprints to your future. You got to watch what you think and what you say because, again, universe is always listening, friends. What you put out the universe, universe receives it, looks at it, and then sends it back three to ten times over. So you've got to watch out what you're putting out, what your thoughts and your actions, your intentions, and all that in the month of September. The month is also a time for us to embrace opportunities for growth and success that can come our way. Whether it's with your career, again, with your finances, with the eight vibration and personal development, the eight universal month is all about rising up to the occasion, friends, overcoming the obstacles and achieving greatness. It's even more plausible for us to be able to do so as we are stepping out now of the Mercury retrograde direct. We're only in the post shadow till the 11th of September and things will start weaning down. It'll be a great month. So let September be a month where you stand tall, stand proud, claim your power, call your power back and manifest the abundance and prosperity that you deserve. It's so much easier when you're in an eight vibration to do so. Remember, the universe is there supporting each and every step that we take on the way. Trust in your ability to create your life, the life that you desire. I even teach classes, transform into abundance, because again, your thoughts and words are the blueprints to your future. They say your greatest fears become a reality. Why is that? Because you feed it energy. You put a lot of gas in the gas tank of those fears and those fears become a reality. So instead, put your energy into your greatest desires and that in which you want to manifest and that in which you're already manifesting in the future. The eight vibrations all about manifesting, especially around career, business, finances, and economy. The eight vibrations, remember the infinity symbol showing us that September offers up infinite possibilities. The eight vibration also highlights, again, finances in the economy. So therefore, I would expect, without a doubt, an extremely shaky market with the stock markets and with the economy in September, especially the latter part of September. Now, the date September 11th just popped in my head, which is the last day of the post shadow of retrograde. And I believe it's in Virgo at this point, or is going to be by that point. Not that that's significant, but that date jumps in my mind, and we know about that date from 2001 as well. So we'll have to keep our eyes on that date. So therefore, again, I expect very shaky markets in the economy in September, especially the latter part of September, even more so when we get right around that lunar eclipse on September 17th. Then from September 17th into late September, we're gonna, we should have a pretty darn good idea as to where things are going and heading with the economy, even though most of us already do, but more people will have much clearer, much more clarity on where the economy's going. And we all know where it's going into the tank, friends, not good. For October, the nine vibration, remember that's all about endings, death of cycles, just like the whole year 2025 that we'll be stepping into just a few months out. So remember to take advantage of the eight vibration for yourself. Because, you know, when it comes to the global elite, they're sure going to take advantage of it. They're going to profit like crazy off these collapsing markets. Without a doubt, friends, something crazy is about to happen with the economy. And the eight vibration of the month of September shows that more than anything. But remember, too, that you can profit if you play your cards right. Or I can read the cards for you. But play those cards right and you can profit in this eight vibration. And you can make great achievements and opportunities around business, career, and so forth. This is the month to make it happen. The eight vibration is also the infinity symbol showing us that September offers us all up infinite possibilities. The eight also highlights, as I told you, finances, career, business, and the economy. So therefore, without a doubt, I would expect there to be very, very shaky markets in the economy, United States and globally, it doesn't matter where you are. Remember, the eight vibration vibrates on the entire planet, not just one particular country, especially the latter part of September when we get around that lunar eclipse on September 17th through towards the end of September. That's when I would expect big shaky things to happen, not just only with the economy and the markets, but in the world in general, it's going to be uh, eclipse season. Big things always happen in eclipse season. And that eclipse season starts September 17th. By late September, we should have a very, very good idea where things are heading in the economy. 
Even though most of us do already know where they're heading, we already know the elites, the global elites' plans to initiate their global currency. We know all that. So most of us know. But many people are oblivious. So those that are oblivious will know much more clearly and awaken to the fact in the state of current economies and financial systems. It's going to be interesting. But remember, this heads us into October, the nine vibration, and 2025, a nine vibration. And that's when everything comes to an end and markets come to complete collapses. And by 2026, they instill their new currency. That's all part of the plan. But let's just hold in the light that it all works out to our benefit. Because in the month of September, in this eight vibration, you can either make it or break it. So be mindful of your expenses and don't do things with fear because when you feed that energy of fear, that fear becomes a reality. Feed all your energy into your desires and your vision of what it is you want to manifest in the future, knowing in your heart that it's already happening and get excited. Wake up every day as if you're already there. That's the key to manifesting and utilizing the eight vibration of September to your advantage. September's eight universal month vibration brings in this big surge of energy that's going to invite all of us to step into our power and again take charge of our lives. The number eight is synonymous with strength, success, and material abundance. You know, in many cultures, they, you write the number eight on a piece of paper, stick it in your purse or wallet. It just tracks money and finances. And you can also, in many cultures, when you go into their business, especially Asian cultures, they have the number eight behind the counter and it's all decorated with flowers or what have you. And if it's not behind their counter, I guarantee you it's underneath their cash register. So if you have a business, you might want to follow that too. So with this universal alignment with the eight vibration to help you manifest your goals, to achieve your ambitions and to create lasting prosperity, these are the important do's and don'ts of the eight vibration. Starting with setting clear goals, the eight vibration is going to support us with decisive action and focused effort. That's so important, friends. Use this time to define your goals very, very clearly and take practical steps towards achieving them. Another important do is you are definitely going to want to be disciplined. Tongue twister there. You want to be <laughs> disciplined. Discipline, because success under the eight vibration requires dedication and it requires discipline, just like anything else in life. So stay committed to your plans and do not be afraid, friends, to work hard to achieve your dreams. It takes hard work to do so. So don't be afraid of that hard work. You also do want to embrace leadership. This is literally a time for you to step up, friends. Step up and take the lead. Whether it's in your own personal or whether it's in your professional life, embrace the opportunities to guide and to inspire others. Step up, friends. Step into your power, as I told you earlier. Another big do is managing your finances wisely. Remember, the eight vibration is closely tied to material wealth, very closely. You know, many people, a majority of people that win big lotteries are in their own personal eight vibration when they do so. So focus on financial planning, investments, and wise ways of spending to ensure long-term stability and growth. Also, you want to do things and you want to act with integrity because the eight vibration and the eight energy rewards all of us who act with honesty and with fairness. So stay true to your values, friends. That's important. Too many people have lost those values. Stay very true to your values and make decisions that align with your higher self, that are for your highest vibration. You'll be glad you did. And now we move on to the important do nots, the don'ts of the eight vibration. And the first thing you don't wanna do is you don't wanna avoid overworking. Remember, you gotta work hard to achieve those goals and dreams, friends. And while the eight does encourage hard work, it's also important that you don't burn yourself out completely. Balance out your drive for success with self-care and rest. We're going to need that, especially the first part of September as we're coming out of that post-shadow retrograde. I know a lot of people in the medical field, they're very, very overwhelmed and busy right now. Happens every single retrograde as we come out of it. People end up having issues, ailments, you know, they get sick. It's so common. That's why I nurture yourself and take it if you did have issues in August or late July. 
Take that as a sign that you need to nurture yourself and nurture your emotions. Another thing you don't want to do is you don't want to be overly materialistic. Remember, in life, to reach the level of abundance, joy, and happiness that we all are here to achieve and most never do, the first thing is it's a balance between the material and the spiritual. That comes up in people's readings, life readings. Quite, I think it came up for a client today. It is a balance of those two. The, the, the pursuit of wealth is, is the key theme. But avoid becoming too focused on these material gains. Dropping into fear and worry about money. Money's not going to want to come into your life. It's not going to want to hang out with you. Remember that the true success also involves emotional and spiritual fulfillment. Ask yourself, is this bringing me joy and happiness or will that or can that bring me joy and happiness? If the answer is no, why are you putting the energy into it? If the answer is yes, then you know you're on the best path possible. So another thing is don't resist change. Change is inevitable, friends. Life is constantly changing. We, we age each and every moment of every day. So the A vibration is all about bringing us opportunities for transformation you want to take advantage of these opportunities for transformation. Be open to change. Be open to change even if it feels challenging. You know, a good challenging always, the finish line's always a reward at the end. So it often also leads to greater growth and greater success. So again, do not resist change. Very important. Also, beware of power struggles. Not power outages, although we'll see those too, but I think more of those are going to come in October than we will see in September. The ones in September will be more weather related, but beware of power struggles. The intense energy of the eight vibrations sometimes can lead us to conflicts over control. That's what we're going to witness in the world. Conflicts over control and aim for collaboration rather than domination. Collaboration's much better than domination. We see that domination happening in the United States for how long? And it's not even the United States. It's the global elite pushing, pushing, just pulling the strings up above, right? Again, aim for collaboration other than domination in your interactions when it comes to others. Also, avoid impulsiveness. Don't want to be impulsive. The drive for quick results can also lead to very hasty decisions that you end up regretting later. So take time to think things through and make well-considered choices. And again, go back to what I said a few minutes ago. Does this or will this bring me joy and happiness? That can help you along the line in the month of September with making some decisions, maybe all decisions, depending on what your decisions are. So let the eight vibration of September's universal month be a time for you to harness your strength, take bold steps towards your goals, and manifest the abundance you seek. Trust, of course, in your ability to create the life in which you desire. And remember, to balance out ambition with integrity and with wisdom. Taking and following all these steps and do's and don'ts will ensure that you make the best out of September that you possibly can. Now let us turn to the stars in the important astrological alignments in the month of September that can also help assist all of us and making the absolute best of the month of September, while also understanding the incoming energies. That's important. When you know what energies are coming in and how they affect us, that's why you got to tune in every Tuesday to Tuesday's Tittle Tea Time, so that you know when different energies are coming in, like the retrograde that we just endured. In early September till the 2nd, we're still in the energy shift, which happened on the full moon back in August. That ends on the new moon. So those first two days, the energies have been crazy. The end of August into early September, crazy. You may be feeling anxiety, uh, stomach issues. I noticed a lot of people having. That usually has to do with the anxiety. You may be having more sleep or less sleep. All these things are this energy cycle we're in. So now you can know that there's not something wrong with you. I have a niece that thinks something's wrong with her, and it's just these energies. I keep telling her, I'm like, it's the energies. It's not that. It's not what you think it is. It's the energy especially a triple cancer. You're being totally hit with energies. Cancers are very, very sensitive. So on September 1st, we have Pluto re-entering the sign of Capricorn. So as September begins, the very first day, Pluto makes its powerful return into the sign of Capricorn, marking off a time of deep transformation. See, there's that headline again, just like the eight vibration, all about transformation. 
This transit is going to encourage us to rebuild the structures in our lives, both personal and both collective. And no, and the things that no longer serve us more than anything. That's very important. The things that no longer serve us. It's a time for us to let go starting on September 1st. And we're still in that energy shift. September 1st. That's all about letting go too. Getting rid of, clearing things, bringing out truth, bringing out wisdom, giving us sometimes downloads of information when we sleep. It's a really interesting, powerful time. Again, that's why you're feeling a little off for the past week or two. The energy is all about tearing down the old to make way for the new, setting the tone for the whole month of September. So it's going to be very, very interesting to say the least when September kicks in and Pluto re-enters Capricorn. On September 2nd, we have the beautiful new moon, not that you can see it, but the new moon in the sign of Virgo. Hey, Virgos, hey. So the new moon in Virgo is going to bring a refreshing wave of energy, a refreshing wave of clarity more than anything, clarity and practicality. It's an ideal time, like all new moons are, to set your intentions. But with this new moon in Virgo, you're going to want to set your intentions when it comes to self-improvement when it comes to your health, and when it comes to daily routines. Virgo's energy is very grounded energy. It's an earth sign, of course. So that encourages us to pay very close attention to the details and take small, consistent, and constant steps towards your goals. So let the new moon on September 2nd be an amazing time for you to refine your plans, to align your actions with your higher purpose, and write down the things you wish to manifest in the future. When we write things down, it's much more powerful. And in the new moon ceremonies, we write it down. I always write things down. Thank you, universe, for opening me up and bringing me blank, blank, blank. Because you want to be open, and we're not always open. We don't realize it. So thank you for opening me up, and universe will bring it. So thank you for bringing it. Write that on a piece of paper. Fold it towards yourself three times, representing it coming at you threefold, and put it under a green candle and let that candle burn out. Perfect little new moon ceremony that you can do. On September 4th, we have Mars entering the sign of Cancer. So with Mars entering Cancer, this is going to be a time where our actions are driven by emotion and, of course, our intuition. Cancer is the most psychic and intuitive of all zodiac signs. So this transit with the Mars entering Cancer on September 4th is going to stir up a strong desire to protect and, and nurture those that we care about the most. However, it's also extremely important, friends, to be mindful of how you assert yourself as Cancer's energy is very sensitive and they are very defensive. So therefore, again, be aware of this. Channel the energy that comes in into creating yourself a secure and comforting environment, both to protect yourself and to protect those that you love. As we move on to September 9th, that's when Mercury enters Virgo. And that is a time, you know, when Mercury, of course, affects communications. Mercury retrograde and all the communication issues when we first went into that retrograde, the end of July into August, were crazy. That still lingers t slightly till the 11th. It's the post shadow. But on September 9th, the planet of communication is going to enter its home sign of Virgo. And our, that's when our thoughts become more sharp and, of course, more analytical because Virgos can be very analytical. This is a perfect time for organizing things in your life, handling detailed tasks, and communicating with precision. Remember, Virgos are very, very organized, sometimes to the point of being very anal over being so organized. ADH or OCD. OCD is the one I was going to say. OCD, obsessed with it. So Mercury in Virgo also enhances our ability to solve problems. Perfect time, right? Solve problems and express ourselves clearly, making it much easier for us to turn our ideas into actual action. A good time. So good alignments happening in September. You just have to take advantage of them. September 17th, friends, that's when the energies are going to get wild and intense. That is when we have the moon in Pisces conjunct Saturn in Pisces, along with the Pisces lunar eclipse. The kickoff of our autumn eclipse season or spring eclipse season for those in the southern hemisphere. This is a very, very significant day on the astrological calendar, friends. The moon's conjunct with Saturn in Pisces combined with the Pisces lunar eclipse is going to bring in profound emotional release. 
So let yourself release those emotions, friends. Cry. If you're angry, go find a punching bag, punch a punching bag, or go run around the block or something. Because this energy is going to ask you to confront, ask all of us to confront our fears, to let go of past hurts, and embrace the healing power of forgiveness. Very important because the lunar eclipse is going to amplify this process a thousand times, illuminating what's hidden and helping us transcend old emotional patterns. It is a time of spiritual awakening and deep inner work, guiding us to align with our soul's purpose. It's going to be intense, friends. And being that it's going to reveal and illuminate things that are hidden, I would expect major truths, again, to be, you know, come to the surface when it comes to the world and world events. A lot of truths that they're trying desperately to suppress and to keep us from. That's one exciting thing that comes in during eclipse season. Truth. I look forward to it. On September 22nd, my favorite day of the year, the most powerful day of the year, my birthday. But it's also autumn equinox. And that's when the sun enters Libra and Venus enters Scorpio. So a lot of energy is flowing in right after that eclipse on the 17th. Then we have the 22nd, autumn equinox or spring equinox again in the southern hemisphere. The equinox, of course, is going to mark off a moment of perfect balance between both the light and the dark, day and night. As the sun enters Libra, we are going to be reminded of the importance and how important it is to have harmony in our lives. Libra's energy is all about encouraging us to seek balance in our relationships and to approach life with grace and with fairness. Simultaneously, Venus is going to enter Scorpio, and that's going to add a big layer of intensity and passion to our interactions. Again, heightening the emotions even more. Between that, that eclipse on the 17th to the 22nd, it's going to be an intense emotional cycle period, for sure. And this transit's going to have us deep dive, dive very deeply into our emotions, deeply. Not even just our emotions, but also to explore our desires and to transform our relationships. It's a very, very powerful time to foster deep connections, embrace the beauty of emotional vulnerability, spend time grounding your energy, and you're going to want to probably get out into the forest and hug a few trees and thank them for helping ground your energy and all of those crazy emotions coming in on September 22nd. It will be on September 26th when Mercury enters Libra, our last huge significant alignment in September. And as Mercury moves into Libra, our communication style is going to become more diplomatic and focused on creating harmony, something we all need a lot more of. This is an excellent time beginning at the end of September for negotiating things, for resolving conflicts. And hey, hopefully we could see a resolving of conflicts in the Middle East or with the UKR. That would be nice. I doubt that's going to happen, but hey, we can hold it in the light. Together, we can make anything happen, especially the power of prayer or the power of us all having the same vision. So we can hold that vision for peace in the Ukraine and peace in the Middle East because this is a time kicking in on September 26th to resolve conflicts. Now, of course, it's also election season. So, you know, the United States, they'll probably try to want to try to act like they're doing that. We'll see what happens. But on a personal level, again, it's all about negotiations, resolving conflicts, and seeking understanding in our interactions. Mercury in Libra is also going to encourage us to listen as much as we speak. So that's a lot of problems that I notice in life with people. They like to talk but they don't like to listen because as you're talking to them they're too busy thinking about what they're going to talk about next yeah we all know people like that or known people like that so mercury and libra is going to encourage us again to listen much more or at least as much as we actually speak fostering in that balance again balance when it comes to meaningful conversations so use that energy coming in on september 26 to build bridges and find common ground with others and with your interaction with others and again, you'll be glad you did. Overall, September is a month of profound transformation, emotional depth, and a pursuit of balance. The cosmos are aligning to help us rebuild, to heal, and to connect on a much deeper level. So make sure you take time to meditate. Make sure you take time to nurture yourself. Embrace the changes. Trust in the process. Trust the universe and trust that your guardian angels got your back. And let the month of September be a journey 
towards greater harmony and towards self-discovery. Beautiful tribe, before I move on to specific predictions from my spirit guides, I want to welcome you to my channel and back to my channel. My name is Joseph Tittle, aka Spirit Man JT, and I'm so glad you're hanging out with me for September's forecast and predictions. If you're new here, you want to vibe with the tribe, please do smash that subscribe, the bell, and all so that you get content and notifications. Hopefully, you'll get your notifications. And if you don't, you can always find me every Tuesday. For some people, it's Wednesday for Tuesday's Tittle Tea Time Predictions Update, where we talk about world events, how they align or may not align with predictions and prophecy with new predictions each and every Tuesday. So be sure to check out Tittle Tuesday's Tea Time. Down below, you'll also find the links to all my social media, including my subscribe star, Awaken Your Spirit platform of supporters who help make this free content possible for everybody else. Whether you're a member down below of this platform or whether you're a member of subscribe star, I am grateful because, again, you help make this free content possible for everybody else. I thank you with infinite love and gratitude. Also, beware of imposters on social media, especially Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. If you get a message privately on any platform other than my email directly, I can assure you that it is not me at all. So please, you don't need to email my office and tell us. You just need to report those profiles and keep reporting those profiles. You will never receive a direct message from me ever. So please, again, report those profiles. Remember, you can also find me on other platforms like Rumble and Spotify. So if you're on Rumble and Spotify, look me up and give me a follow. And thank you for showing your love by clicking that thumbs up love button to get this information out to others and to help our tribe grow. Let us move on to September's forecast and specific predictions. So as I stated earlier, I expect the economy and the markets to appear like a roller coaster ride in the month of September with major ups and downs. Some are going to be set to make a lot of money in September, mostly the global elite, of course. We got to watch the moves they make. It should tell us a whole lot. We just saw Rupert Murdoch make a huge move with getting rid of dumping tons, billions of dollars in stocks. I think $287 billion to be exact, somewhere around there. These are all signs that it's coming. Something I predicted years ago to look out for 2024, especially when we get to October 2024. September is just a little brief look in what we're going to expect. Because I feel like the downs will rebound back up again. It's just like I said, it's such an up and down roller coaster this month. And I'd be more concerned about big losses and huge drops when we step into that, that eclipse season on September 17th. And then also even around September 22nd, keep an eye on the markets around the 22nd. We could see a huge dip in the markets on that date on the 17th or even in between that window, the 17th to the 22nd. Also, I've been stating for years, many years, actually over a decade now that silver and gold are the best long-term investments. So therefore, you know, that, that's the best. It's still, that's going to dip too and it's going to go back up. But overall, when everything else collapses, you're going to want to have something physical. Also, physical things would include food and things, you know, to be prepared. That's important. That's where you should be buying, spending your money on your security. There is also going to be a point where even precious metals, again, do take a bit of a dip. This would also be a time for us to add to our metal collection. So keep an eye for that dip in, in metals. It's only going to be a small one before it goes back up again. BlackRock has been coming to my mind all day when I was writing this yesterday, actually, and I cannot quite put my finger on it. We know that they are the them and their sub companies actually continue to buy up absolutely everything, making them the largest holder of wealth and assets in the world. So, of course, everything is being done and the economy is being orchestrated by BlackRock's commanders, which connects again to the richest families on the planet who basically control it all. So I feel that BlackRock is making huge headlines in the media. This could actually be due to some type of major loss to the company. I also feel some sometime in the future, not necessarily September. And remember, not all predictions, even though this is September forecast and predictions, predictions don't always happen right away. Some take a little bit longer than others, unless we spe specify. Again, not necessarily September, but BlackRock is going to lose a large amount of properties that they have been buying up. And we know BlackRock's been buying up all the real estate. They started during the housing market crash. So I feel this is more related to either some type of an earth event, like a major earthquake 
and or a wildfire. This could also be a combination of all these, you know, a whole bunch of events hitting an area where they own a large amount of real estate. So I feel that they will face issues with the insurance companies as they try to get back what they lost. Because getting back what they lost would probably bankrupt the insurance companies. I just see a big problem. I'm thinking this is probably more heading into 2024. But we're going to see things around BlackRock in the month of September for sure. And we're already hearing so much about bugs and viruses, mostly igniting in late July and August. Everything from new variants to so many concerns around the mosquitoes. Blood suckers, they gross me out. Something I predicted years ago, if you recall or you've been following me long, long enough, back when Gates and his friends dumped millions of genetically modified bloodsuckers over places such as Florida. Remember that? Well, when that happened, I predicted a spike in mosquito-borne bugs and illnesses would be following soon after that big dump of mosquitoes. And guess what? It's exactly what happened. It started in Florida and Texas. I think it was last year, maybe. Yeah, last year. I remember talking about it on Tuesday's show and for, it showed up in places it hasn't showed up in decades. Hmm. All following the mosquito dump. I don't believe in coincidences, friends. So since we have so many reports of so many different bugs, such as the West Nile, the triple E, isn't it the EEE bug or something with mosquitoes? Now states and towns are spraying more toxic chemicals into the air. Not very healthy, of course, for humans, animals, or the food that's grown nearby. Not good at all. So expect the bug concerns to heighten. Of course, the closer we get to election season, December comes to me very strongly around concerns. I don't know what the concerns are. Maybe it's a big flu thing, but I get concerns in the month of December. Spirit also says not to be concerned with fear, but instead be concerned that you're healthy. Washing your hands and being the best healthy version of you that you can possibly be. And fortunately, I feel, unfortunately, not fortunately, unfortunately, I feel that some other bug is set to come. And I feel that we must watch China very, very closely. China, that's what Spirit said, watch them closely, as if it's a flashback to 2020. But not entirely, not entirely, but sort of, by watching China. So again, Spirit says, do not worry yourself to a point of making yourself sick like many people did back in 2020. They made themselves sick from fear, worry, concern, and the mass statistics. Don't do that to yourselves. Another thing we're going to see in the month of September is massive flooding events. Major flooding events, unlike anything that we've seen in many places. We're going to see monsoons in, out here in the west of the United States. We're also going to see flooding and even earthquake activity down in our friends down under in Australia. I see... Um, Small earthquakes hitting around Sydney, Australia. One that may actually shake things up, you know, enough to know, enough to notice, not enough to, like, cause maybe some things to fall off the shelves or something. That's about it. So our friends in Australia, beware of that. That just came to me. And I wasn't able to prepare much for this because I had a very overwhelming week uh, with some close friend passed. The rats ate the wiring or mice ate the wiring. Half my power was out. It's just been crazy. So I haven't been able to work too, too much on the prediction aspect. But, of course, the first Tuesday of every month, I will have a whole list of new predictions for you. So check that out. So going back to flooding and flood, floods, China is in huge risk, which is in past predictions, my weather prediction video. But Spirit's showing me that now, China. And China is going to lose two major dams within in the future, not necessarily in September, but they're going to lose two major dams, even flooding down in New Zealand, flooding down in New Zealand and something big hitting right around Tokyo. So big, big typhoons coming in through there. <clears throat> I see even flooding in Taiwan, the Philippines. So it's pretty, pretty big, pretty thorough. I see flooding even to my friends on the East Coast, uh, New Jersey, New Jersey popped up in my mind. And that could be related likely to a hurricane because I expect there to be some big hurricanes coming in in September and into October. And remember, you know, the biggest hurricanes, well, Hurricane Katrina hit, wasn't it August 29th? Hurricane Sandy hit October 29th. There's that 29 day. 
You always got to watch out for storms that come in around the 11th or around the 29th. So that brings up the date the 11th because it keeps popping out in my mind. It's been popping out in my mind and it's the last day of the post shadow of the retrograde and just a lot of heavy energies around that time period. I would expect around September 11th for there to be a major world event like a major earthquake or like flooding that's, you know, biblical, apocalyptic kind of flooding. This includes floods in the Middle East and floods around Saudi Arabia. And it's going to be like the good Lord upstairs turns on the floodgates in September. This is just showing us how severe and not everywhere, but most places are going to be when it comes to the winter months. Dumping, dumping feet of snow on places that aren't used to receiving many feet of snow. So no matter where you reside on the globe, I would tell you to prepare and expect for major flooding to hit, especially in parts where you wouldn't expect there to be floods. You, many, many people are going to be caught off guard in the month of September. And this is only preparing us for us as we move into October, which is going to be a much wetter and much more active month when it comes to weather, floods, and activity. Remember, October is the nine vibration. It's all about death, endings of cycles, and unfortunately, destruction. So take advantage of the eight vibration of the month of September that we're in to reach your goals and to bathe in these energies to help you to ascend spiritually. Remember to always stay grounded and always be prepared, never scared. So no matter where you reside on our beautiful planet Earth, I would tell you not to be scared, but you must be prepared to experience flooding no matter where you live. Because floods are going to catch people off guard, which means a lot of flash floods. Flash floods and even experiencing dam failures or dam breaks and other incidents occurring like that. This is all preparing us as we move into October, what is the nine vibration in numerology. With the nine vibration comes death and endings of cycles, but also often a lot of destruction. So take advantage of the eight vibration that we're in now to plan your goals, to be prepared, and hold in the light all good positive things for yourself and for our planet. And know in your heart and soul that you will always be taken care of. But again, you must be mindful of your surroundings and you got to be prepared. Very important. I see a lot of issues when it comes to banks and banking systems, and this all goes back to my economic prediction, but I would expect there to be many bank closures, including a vision I had a few weeks ago on one of my Tuesday's Tittle Tea Time episodes, visions of lines at the banks again, like what, what just happened in China a couple months ago. And this could be in China again. It doesn't mean it's going to be in the United States, UK, or wherever you are in the world. But I do see people try and access money from ATMs and not being able to access it. And I also see people standing outside of the banks, angry and trying, you know, banging on the doors, trying to say, where the heck's my money? And in some cases, I even see police moving in to break up the crowds. That's exactly what happened in China earlier this year. So this could be a repeat in China, but I would tell you to expect economic challenges no matter where you live. Another country that jumps out at me is Italy. I don't know why. But Italy may be one of those places that experience issues getting money out of ATMs along with UK and England. So beware, friends. Always have cash on hand. Just in case you need to go get groceries or something, you have a little bit of cash on hand at all times. Keep your gas tanks full. And again, always be prepared. Don't be scared. So another thing I see is I see some type of a wide use of some type of explosives that I would refer to as dirty explosives or a dirty boom, boom, boom. Without saying the actual word, I have had visions of this in the past. Actually, what I had visions of in the past was multiple explosions being ignited simultaneously in multiple cities. And this could be and very likely would be related to this past per prediction of me seeing some type of explosive going off in a city that feels dirty to me. Not that this event is going to occur in September exactly. I would say more likely in October. And then also December, because I feel like the year's going out with a bang, especially right around the holiday seasons, as I've been warning for a while now. I also see some type of major walkouts and strikes taking place. And I also I see a big focus on global and, and global trade imports. 
So again, I see some type of major walkouts and strikes taking place, and I also see a big focus around global trade and ports. I would expect several types of incidents and accidents occurring around shipping container ships and ports. Striking could even be revolved, because I see major striking and walkouts, this could be revolved around trade in some, some way or another. For example, a large trucking company striking or say a port gets shut down for some reason or another. So it could be related to that. This also reminds me of a past vision that I had of an explosion at a port. And many of you will remember that because that did come into fruition shortly after I made that prediction. It came true in China. I think like a month after I made the prediction or so, something like that. But I still strongly feel that ports are going to be a huge target and that we should see some of these threats around our ports and shipping containers in the month of September. I see more people taking to the streets. I see people taking to the streets. We saw this just past in UK with people taking to the streets. We see it all over happening, but I see it happening even more in the month of September. Because of the heavy energies that are coming in, the Mars alignment that's coming in, and all these different alignments... This is going to make people not be able to channel their emotions very well, if you know what I mean. That's why I said in the beginning of this forecast to stay strong, allow your emotions to flow, and channel those emotions into something positive. If you need to cry, go cry. If you're angry, go punch a punching bag or go run around the block. But channel those emotions and let them out because it's very important. Remember, disease, illness, and ailments, whether you pull out your back or hurt your elbows, all connected to emotions. So that's why we're going to see a lot of people with complaining about something. People like to complain anyway, a lot of them, right? But you're going to hear a lot more of them complaining, and they're probably going to have legitimate complaints in the month of September, whether it's because their legs hurt, their back hurts, their butt hurts, or whatever, but something's going to hurt. And most of it, again, is connected to emotions. That's what's hurting, the emotions. So I see, again, more anger in the streets, more issues for the United Kingdom, and a point where military are guarding streets or certain parts of the United Kingdom, or more likely pushing, uh, pushing their globalist, you know, their communist global agenda. That's what they're doing over there in the UK and everywhere else in the world. I see some type of controversial passing, like somebody passing away, and it felt very controversial. I don't know why, but it did. It felt like they were being taken, you know, like... You remember the movie Shining? Red Rum, Red Rum, spell it backwards. Yeah, that. That's in the Hollywood, California area too. So some kind of controversy sometimes. It could even be what actually pops in my mind. Is it reminds me, it makes me think of, I don't know why, but it makes me think of Charles Manson and that whole, whole thing that happened back in the 60s. Come to think of it, didn't that all happen all around the same time? The assassinations and all that that was happening in the 60s during the crazy chaos? Actually, I think it was. And I remember saying that in past predictions, and that was a while ago that there would be another Manson-type thing. I don't know if that happened because I said that a while back, but that just popped in my mind as I'm relaying this prediction over to you. And I also see separately some type of celebrity arrest, perhaps several celebrity arrests. Celebrity arrests can also include politicians, and I wouldn't be surprised and shocked at all to see Donald Trump be one of them. Because if they don't try to arrest them in September, they're certainly going to try to arrest them by the end of this year. That's a promise from the elite themselves. I also see President Biden, as I've been predicting for four years now, I see that finally that point of that prediction four years ago is about to be fulfilled. And that is that the final co-op, the coup, excuse me, the coup against the White House and Biden will finally be completed when they push him out fully. They want Harris in place, and they want Harris in place before the elections. And if you want to know more about her, check out my last Tuesday's episode, and I'll show you what she's truly all about. Initially, I was feeling over a year ago that it would be maybe December that Biden would be out, because I predicted before he even went at, into office, before January of, of 2020, I said that I saw him exiting the White House and Harris taking an oath for a very short time. And it felt very short. So I figured December, perfect timing. I think also because Biden's in his four vibration in December, which is all about health and all that. But really, it doesn't all have to do with health because his health hasn't been good since the day he took the White House. So I feel that that September is likely the month 
October at the latest, and it might be the first week of October, but I'm thinking it's coming up really, really soon, within the first couple weeks of September, that we're going to hear Biden saying that he has, because of health issues, he's stepping aside. And then they're going to put her in under oath. It's part of their plan. And it's the plan of the global elite. And that should be scary for you if they're playing in that, friends, because it's not for your highest good. It's not for the highest good of our country either, or for the world either. It's to help the globalists achieve all their planned outcomes. I've also stated many times that I feel not only Donald Trump's life is in danger, and I predict it in the past that I saw him being shot in what I thought was the right shoulder. I was only a few inches off, and it was his right ear at a rally, and that's exactly what happened. <clears throat> Except again, it was the ear instead of the shoulder. A few more an inch down, and it would have hit his shoulder. Regardless, that was the first attempt, and I said there will be more, including an attempt to poison him. But the other one that i always been saying that is at a high risk is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., and again, look what happened in the 60s to his uncle and, and his family. It's just tragic. And RFK is the one that now they're really angry at because he joined teams with Trump. That angers them. They don't want him there because what does he want to do? He wants to stop the poisoning of all our food and all the tainted food that we eat and all this bad diseases that are happening in America. They don't want that stuff. The medical community is making billions, trillions of dollars off of it. They want you not to be well. That's all the more reason why we should focus on being well, eating healthy foods and avoiding the processed garbage that they try to get you to eat that has made most of Americans obese. So RFK or Junior, I feel, is also strongly, strongly could be taken out. I feel like RFK could be taken out and he might be the one I saw visions of getting out of the car or get going either in or out of the car. It reminded me sort of Ronald Reagan a little bit. Could be sort of like playing out like that. Playing out just like it did for his uncle, actually. Wasn't his uncle played out, went that way or was that his dad? I can't remember. But basically, it's like a repeat of the 1960s. I see some type of major issues arising around India, especially in and around Delhi, India. I feel conflict coming to India, to the people and, of course, the government. And I also see issues at the borders of India. Likely, these issues are going to be with China. And unfortunately, we're about to witness a major uptick in conflict, war, and violence, unfortunately, including more violence on the streets globally. Again, this is all an uptick that ignites in September, but takes us through into the month of October. October, as I've been warning since last December, is going to be an uptick. The uptick will be an understatement. Really, it will be an understatement. Next month, it's going to be intense. But let's again get through September 1st. I expect new conflict to break out, most definitely between Israel and Iran. Spirit shows me a flag flying ever so false, a big white flag with the word false written on it. We all know what that means, right? Spirit showed me that this morning, actually, and said that this is meant to accelerate the conflict. So whatever, something big is going to happen over there in the Middle East. Don't believe what you're hearing. That's what I would take it. When Spirit shows me a big white flag with that word written on it, flying, you know that this is just like kind of like what happened in 2001 in America and weapons of mass destruction that never existed. This could also be where my feelings of dirty explosive could be ignited in several cities. That could also be revolved. Another thing that comes to me, and I think I just had this on my Tuesday show or in recent predictions, it goes back to my channel predictions, is the um, Temple Mount. I see something happening around the Temple Mount that doesn't feel good. The Temple Mount in Israel is going to have multiple issues, including something with knives and stabbings around that, that Temple Mount. Again, something exploding, which was in my past predictions. But I also see some type of act of God coming down, almost like the way I see it in my vision is a bolt of lightning striking. I don't know if that, it's probably metaphoric, again, a vision, spirit, sometimes we have to interpret it, but I see a big bolt of lightning striking right on down and hitting that little, little black stone that they all pray to. Interesting. And that just came to me now. I see people in hazmat suits and that was a little disturbing. Some of these hazmat suits were white. And then some of them were yellow. 
So I suppose I'm in two separate places completely. One of these visions is most likely connected to those dirty, dirty things blowing up that I just mentioned in a previous prediction. And then there, then I also feel that this could be related to a nuclear power plant because I feel like there's going to be issues around nuclear power plants. We saw a few. We already recently witnessed issues with Ukraine sending drones to ignite a nuclear power plant in Russia, along with a separate fire at another Russian power plant, nuclear power plant. So sadly, spirit shows me more is coming. As much as I want to bite my tongue on this right now, I'm going to say that we may even see a modern-day Chernobyl take place. And I really hope that's not the case. And if it were, it'd probably be in Russia. Uh, Spirit said to me, sleeping volcanoes will soon awake. When the three sleepers who have been asleep for many decades reignite, beware, a major earthquake will hit between the two of the three eruptions. This quake may be beneath the Pacific, so we're really literally just going to have to sit back and watch for these three sleeping volcanoes. And I don't even know what the sleepers are. Someone will sure tell us in the comments when it happens. When it happens. Not yet. Don't guess. Just when the three sleepers awake is what Spirit showed me. And I felt like two of those sleepers were on different continents. And I'm thinking one of them's here in the United States. And it might go back to Mount St. Helens because I did say that that's going to erupt again in the near future. I'm also pulled and Spirit at it. That one will awaken with a vengeance. So a volcano that's been sleeping for decades will awaken with vengeance. I'm also pulled to Greece and Italy. This is where there would be, this is might be where one of the three sleepers may be, one of the sleeping volcanoes, or it could be, excuse me, a totally separate pull to a different major eruption and earthquake. Could be two separate things. I feel problems around Belarus. In Poland, both. And I have said for years now, friends, that Poland's going to get pulled into that conflict. And when they do, it'll just be a ripple effect and others will get pulled into it too. Not sure if this is going to be true for the month of September. But what I do know and feel strongly is that many issues and some type of conflict or banging of heads, so to speak, with Poland and then separately also with Belarus. And I don't know if it's between the two of them. This prediction, this information came to me at the same time. So it could be a bumping heads between those two countries, actually. Belarus and, and Poland. Banging heads and issues coming up revolved around that. And then the area around Indonesia. To Japan, the Philippines, and all that area. Up to, up, you know, you got Indonesia, Japan, the Philippines in between there. That whole area feels to me like it... It's going to have a huge flare up of tectonic and volcanic activity. And I also have visions of huge storms, uh, big, huge, massive storm clouds, probably typhoons, definitely typhoons, says Spirit, hitting through that whole entire area of the globe. So through the Indonesia, through the Philippines, even up into Japan, but also Vietnam, I saw with record floods and mud and rock slides. And Spirit says that we are going to see an awful lot of mud and rock slides and mountains crumbling and even sinkholes from the severe flooding beginning in September, but working us through till the end of the year. So it's going to be interesting with the weather. And this is only preparing us for the craziness of 2025 and the nine vibrational year, universal year. Also, remember the energies for the month of September are going to be a bit of a roller coaster ride when they hit especially when we get around to mid-September, just before the eclipse on the 17th. So lots of emotions are coming up, friends. Lots of emotions, so be sure to flow through those emotions. Do not suppress your emotions. Remember, emotions are connected to diseases, illnesses, and ailments. So if something's coming up, for example, you got a sore throat, that means you're not speaking, you're not saying something you need to say. And if you don't speak or say what needs to be said, you're going to end up with strep throat or even worse as you get older. Everything's connected, everything with emotion. So again, flow through the emotions of September, ground your energy, get outside, hug a tree, thank that tree for helping ground your energy and and help ground those emotions. And remember, nurture yourself and nurture your relationships and you too can make the best out of September 2024.
So as I said earlier, I have had a really overwhelming week between someone close to me passing away and the rodents in the attic, and it's just been pretty crazy, friends, and the ending of Mercury Retrograde, and yada, yada. So I will have a lot more predictions available for you on my next Tittle Tea Time on Tuesday, and what will the date be, September 2nd or 3rd, September 3rd? So keep an eye out for that. But also on September 1st, you might have missed it in case you missed it. I did channeled predictions. Here's a little taste of what came through in the channel predictions posted Sunday, September 1st. Check it out. All of you present upon the earth now have chosen to be there, to be a part of this amazing shift in dimensions, shifts in consciousness, and many, many events and challenges that will take you there. 2024 was the initial spark of the craziness before you step into the nine vibration of 2025. You'll see things in the skies that you will find very hard to believe. Some of these things will be tricks and deceptions so that people around the world can begin to see the darkness in a new light and be able to see the corruptions as you are already witnessing, but not yet on a scale like you will witness in the future, especially in the year 2025. Volcanic eruptions of truth. Volcanic eruptions of corruption. People will seem confused, not knowing what to believe or who to believe. This, in turn, again, will be followed by light codes that will help people to tap deeper into their conscious and subconscious minds so that they can understand much more clearly. I very much hope that you enjoyed the September forecast and predictions, and I am grateful that you made it to this point in the video. Thank you for showing your love by clicking that thumbs up love button so the algorithms can get this to more people so our tribe can grow. And again, a big, huge thank you. To all my supporters who make this free content possible for everybody else. Whether you join as a monthly supporter down below on YouTube or other platforms. Whether you join the Subscribestar Awaken Your Spirit platform. Or any other contributions. Again, we couldn't do it without you. And I appreciate you with infinite love and gratitude. Don't forget to sign up for the free newsletter down below. Open up that newsletter and you will see the forecast for September right before the first of the month or by the first of the month put out the newsletter with the numerology astrology and all the content from the past month perhaps upcoming classes events and so forth and remember you can find more information out about me at my website joseph tittle t-i-t-t-e-l.com or spearmanjt.com until the next time friends i hope you have an amazing month of september get out there celebrate life celebrate you and remember to be kind to others as you wish others be kind to you and most importantly, remember, be bold, be true, be kind, be you. Let your light shine, friends. Let it shine. Have a beautiful rest of your day and a beautiful month of September. Namaste and much love. Much love.